sir. South Dakota cruise mess. Uh, we're about to embark on a submarine pinning. Uh, two sailors are about to get their dolphins. And uh, for this, this means it's a step for their careers. They uh, basically have passes rigorous qualification. Uh, we have entrusted them to be able to perform and do their duties uh, when it real casually occurs. There will be a dolphin pinning ceremony for cruise mess in five minutes. So we refer to it as dolphins, uh, our submarine qualification pin, and that's what that means. Fish on your chest, that is fish, dolphins, this slang for This is our submarine qualification. Uh, you see them on somebody's chest and you know they've, they've got the knowledge and the, the know-how to be able to save you if you're an injured man or some catch that hits the boat. You know you can trust those guys who are on watch and are able to save the ship in that time of need. All right, everybody, so today we have the honor and privilege of pinning two of our newest shipmates qualified in submarines after a long, hard qualification process. Uh, and Commander Liddy's first underway at the South Dakota yeah. CO. So with no further ado, I will turn it over to the exoter the citation, and uh, pinners, please come up and pin our new shipmates. Oh, yeah. Commanding officer, PCU South Dakota takes pleasure presenting these Submarine qualification certificates to electronic technician second class Jacob Duckett and machinist mate first class Jacob Privet. Having successfully completed the rigorous professional requirements for qualification of submarines, having gained a thorough knowledge of submarine construction and operation, having demonstrated their reliability under stress, and having my full confidence and trust, I hereby certify they are qualified in submarines. Presented this 27th day of November 2018 on board PCU South Dakota. CE Liddy, commanding officer PCU South Dakota. All right, that boy can clap, right? Hey! Well done, Chris. Yeah. All right. Well done. On a note for uh, payoffs of Privet's fish, uh, they're actually heritage fish from his father on the PCU Honolulu back in 1984. Oh, yeah. 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 That's good stuff. He was a nuclear mechanic. He was a nuclear mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> He's only half as good. <laughs> ETN 2, Jacob Duckett. MMN 1, Jacob Privet. Time, 0741. We secured from battle stations in a hurry because we were only 7,000 yards from the Conjugon Lighthouse. But certainly, we'd been heard, if not seen. No sooner, sooner had we secured than another scooter was in sight. Again, battle stations, and again, the target was sunk. Later, a plane was picked up in the overcast at three miles. Diving, I heard six distant explosions <clears throat> as I left the conning tower, heading for my bunk. Swish! The diving officer heard the, me mutter, sometimes I think they're actually testing our nerves. Smirking, he added, not with the distant thunder below, sir. The submariner. Only the submariner realizes to what great extent an entire ship depends on them as individuals. To a landsman, this is not understandable. And sometimes it is even difficult for us to comprehend. But it is so. A submarine at sea is a different world in itself. And in consideration of the protracted and distant operations of submarines, the Navy must place responsibility and trust in the hands of those who take such ships to sea. In each submarine, there are those who, in the hour of emergency or peril at sea, can turn to each other. These individuals are ultimately responsible to themselves and each to the other for all aspects of operation 
of their submarine. They are the crew. They are the ship. This is perhaps the most difficult and demanding assignment in the Navy. There is not an instant during their tour as a submariner that they can escape the grasp of responsibility. These privileges, in view of their obligations, are almost ludicrously small. Nevertheless, it is the spur which has given the Navy its greatest mariners, the men and women of the submarine service. It is a duty which most richly deserves the proud and time-honored title, submariner. As Petty Officer Privet can attest, it's been a team journey with all the nukes getting qualified fish. And so it definitely wasn't me alone. It definitely wasn't me and Privet alone. It was the whole team. Who y'all? Yeah. Well done, guys. Thank you. Well deserved. My name is Alvin Arnold. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. My rank is CSS3 Arnold. Uh, it was a journey. I went to uh, college, to D2 college, played football. Then from there, I decided I wanted to join the military. And who influenced my, my decision to join? It was most definitely my daughter. Her being born made sure, made me want to be the man that she could look up to. They love the fact that I'm in the military. They, it was like, you go on a lot, but at the same time, they just love it when you come home. My family's had a lot of questions on, like my mom used to love to say like, is it windows on there? Like, are you gonna be able to look at fish? I'm like, I have no idea. I really had no idea. But now nah, most definitely my family supports my decision. It's really not that bad. Sub life is really not that bad. I know a lot of people try to kind of paint the picture that it might be or it's like hard, but it's really one of the best jobs I've ever had compared to working in warehouses and everything else that I've done in my life that it's really, it's really a good opportunity. Okay. I do see this is something I can do for 20 years, but I'm always a man that has a plan A and plan B. I will be uh, going to school to do EMTP and everything just in case it doesn't work out, but most definitely going out to sea for six months, doing nothing but saving money, come back and everything is taken care of. But you will have trials, you will have hard days, but it's all about working your way through it. And that's what makes you stronger at the end of the day. So I'm a culinary specialist on the submarine which consists of a couple of things. Like, I'm basically the key to morale on the boat. Our food is what brings them joy. And if they're having a real bad day, they can come down and get some good chow. Turns their whole day around. Also, with parts of that, I'm uh, with the EMAT team, which is the emergency medical team, where we're assisting people as well. So not only are we feeding them, we're taking care of them physically as well. Most definitely everybody on the submarine has more than one job. That's what I like about it, the camar like camaraderie about it because basically everybody has a job of learning each other's job. Everybody's able to take care of one of another. That's the whole meaning about having your fish. Most definitely I enjoy being on submarines more. Some people on cruisers never get to see their captain or they never get to talk. Mine, I can just step through one door and have a full conversation with them. So what's really unique about submarines for me is the racks. That's what I would say. A lot of people wouldn't, but I've never <laughs> lived in a condition where I was like, wow. But it's, it's convenient, like you just close. You six, uh, six people to a bird, and you might even have 18 man where it's a lot more people in there. But it's like after a while, there's just something you come accustomed to. The describing of a rack would be more so of me showing you because it's literally, you have about this much room Maybe you could turn on your side a bigger guy like me. Every time I turn on my side, I hit my fan and it's, <laughs> it's a little hard for me. So the rack is like a bedroom that's very small, which is like hard for a big guy like me. Let's go ahead, come on this way. I can go ahead and go. So we're going upper level. This is upper level of the part of the boat. Going more so back out. So every time people say, come up the ladder, you say up ladder, just to notify people that you're coming up just in case they can't see you. So all these spaces is pretty much our birth and living spaces where you come in and this is pretty six men to one birth and living space. From up here, it's top rack, middle rack, lower. <laughs> it's basically where we sleep, we spend our nights. So this is our bedroom. This is where we live when we're not working. So it's six people to every birthing until you go to like 
18 man, which is a larger berthing, which is a larger living space. And it can get up to 34 people, depending on if they're hot wrecking, which means once one person goes on watch, the other person gets a chance to go to sleep. So I had to take off my shoes. I don't want to turn this way because I don't want to. That's pretty much how it's done. Like that, you see a bigger guy like me. But the good thing about a burden that's like up at this level, I can scoot up at night, have a little bit of room. I have my fan right here, my, my foot locker. Then when I'm ready to go to bed, I just scoot down, close my curtains, call it a night. Ship is operating water assigned to us for submerged operation by Opsked 48 Tech 18, verified by the NAV and myself. Sounding is 1385 fathoms beneath the keel and checks with chart. I have verified that my watch team is ready to submerge the ship. I intend to submerge the ship to 155 feet. Farewell, Opsked Deck, submerge the ship. Farewell, I sir. Submerge the ship, I sir. Pilot, submerge the ship, make your depth 155 feet. <laughs> Submerge the ship, making my depth 155 feet, pilot eye. Submerge the ship, making my depth 155 feet, pilot eye. Go pilot, I don't want to see, dive, dive, two glasses, dive alarm, dive, dive. I don't want to see, dive, dive, two glasses, dive alarm, dive, dive, pilot eye. Go pilot eye. Dive, dive. 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 All vents open. Venting forward. Venting out. Three, two. Dive. 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 Coming to right. Yeah. Yeah. 